Welcome to the 10 minute coding with code flash. Today's topic is all about threading. In some cases, you will be encountering an application that requires a sophisticated calculation or a high, compute high computate computational requirement on performing its task. And that causes an application to be freeze or unresponsive when it is running. With the use of threading, it will aid this problem by running this application on the background. So now, all we need to do is to have a list view, rich text box, and making some docking properties of all those content in order to fit on the form when it is maximized. The left side is the list view, and the right side would be the rich text box. And then, put a column having the actual content or the file name of the file that had been seen on the list view. A button to browse and copy all of the files you want to put on our default folder. The next part would be create a string array that holds all of the items that had been selected when the open file dialog is open. So when the dialog is open and click and the file and the button OK is clicked, the files would be assigned on the files we created or the variable that we created as files. Then after that we need to meet we need to need to import the system.io in order for us to copy all of those files on the directory. Another part would be we'll be creating a direct directory on our default folder which is attachments. At runtime we'll be creating a directory Test whether the directory is already created and if it, and if it is not, it will automatically create it at runtime. So if you observe, there is no attachment folder, but if you will be calling the actual method at form load, a new folder is created attachment. Then we need to import the use the threading proper threading library to make our application use the threading so right now we'll, we are creating a method copy file this copy file creates an option for us to copy all, all of the selected item upon browsing into our default folder which is stored at the path variable so with that we just put a counter of how many files are there on the attachments and then we increment by one so that the file name of the copied file would be unique at all time the attachments and then we increment by one so that the file name of the copied file would be unique at all time at all time so calling the copy file then So an error because we did not increment by one with the copy file. So just a simple code inserted. Just normalizing the code, assigning it to a counter, then Counter plus plus increment by one. With that we are now ready to copy all of the files on our default folder. So there you go. The next thing that we will be doing for that we need to have a threading property or threading variable in order to make the running of the application on the background. In some cases, we want to access a control inside the form when running a thread. For example, we will be creating a label here, and then on the thread or the method, we will be calling it by a code. This requires us to have a special code to access the actual 
hidden. For that, we need to have a, we need to take a delegate function that serves as pointer for us to access the actual control. And then afterwards, on the safe copy method, we need to check whether if the label or the control require require us to be invoked in book. So else just call the copy file. So else just call the copy. Dealing with that. Testing all of the content, copying, okay. copy all of those files, and then all of all of them are already copied. So next part will be loading the actual content on the list view. So all we need to do is to get the actual data on the attachments folder, and then by using the directory that get file, we'll be putting it on a string of array which is the files. The list view will be getting the actual content or the name of the file. So in this part, you'll see the items are inserted on the list view, but you need to trick it because all of the paths are already there. Using the substring method, proper substring method, we can now just get the last index of the Back, back word slash and the actual text of the file. So changing it to the view to details and now it's done. So now to reload, in order for us to experience the threading property, you'll see if you'll be click, clicking the reload, it loads all of the content on the list view at one time. So it presses the actual list view and then shows all of the content. But when we will be using a thread to access the load list view, you will show it will show item by item by item on the list view, which will make our program more responsive. So even though we are showing a lot of content, we can do other tasks on our application. So thread that start, start the thread. So you look at that. So it's already showing the content. You will not, not experience the actual benefit of the threading since we are just loading a small amount of data. But if you are loading a lot, a lot of data on our application, you'll see is more responsive. Now, to load the actual content on the rich text box upon clicking on the list view, We'll be using the property of rich text box load file. The first proper parameter would be the path. So we have the path, which is the attachment on our default folder, plus the item that's selected on the list. The rich text box stream type must be selected since we are using a rich text box content. Okay, so see the text, and now you'll see on the left side we we'll, we are clicking on the item and then on the right side we are showing the actual content of that rich text box so another very simple property of of a rich text box is to save the actual content so first we need to check if there's there's an item that's selected on the list view and then if you click the apple button rich rich text box one that save file requires the actual path and then the stream type. Take note the stream type is rich text box since we are dealing with RTF. Rich text box format. So now you'll see that every time that we press the button, save it saves the actual content on our file. The last and final thing that you need to understand is that on the part of deletion, now we'll be creating a delete option. So same as with same as with saving, you need to check either if there's an item that can be selected. 
So file that delete requires us requires us the path. So path plus the list view item that selected, and then asking whether we want to delete or no. If we press the yes button, then it executes our actual code. So let's run it. Let's check it. Okay, and then we refresh the content of the list view. So okay, delete. So we forgot an item or the backslash. Okay. Now, so now it's working. I'm just finding, and we're done. So take note that every time that we create an application, a, a background application. So all of those tasks that requires a high computational cost must be run at the background and then on that background it will not affect the main thread which is our main form so it will be responsive. That's all. Happy coding!